Okay guys, what we're going to be talking about today is momentum, and momentum comes from Newton's laws, which you'll remember the first law of Newton's laws is an object in motion remains in motion unless acted on by a net force. The reality is, is the law of inertia, as it's stated, is actually the law of momentum, right? And so momentum is just the defined characteristic of inertia in motion. We call it the law of inertia because it also incorporates an object at rest, remains at rest unless acted on by a net force. But nevertheless, um, it's essentially describing the same thing. So the first thing is that momentum is inertia in motion. And moreover, inertia itself is simply the tendency of an object to keep doing what it's doing. But more importantly, the reason why it does that is because an object has mass. And so in the most simplest terms, inertia is mass, right? And so when we put mass in motion, then we incorporate the momentum aspect of the whole system. But it's important to note that momentum and mass are not the same thing, right? And so momentum has its own variable and its own term, which I cannot explain, but momentum is P. And so if we take mass and we apply motion, in the form of velocity, then we get momentum. So this is defined as momentum. Now the second thing here that's a new notation are these arrows above these um, variables P and V for velocity. And so I just want to go over that briefly. Anything with an arrow above it is going to be described as a vector. This is vector notation. Vectors are any quantities that have magnitude and direction. And they are more specific um, in physics dealing with magnitude and direction than a typical number. So when we think about things like velocity, when we describe the velocity of an object, we say it is moving at a certain number of meters per second in a given direction. Like, for example, 20 meters per second north, as opposed to just 20 meters per second. If we think about cars, the reason why this is so specific is we want to know if those cars are going to interact or crash or race or etc. Right? And if I just say that you are going 55 miles an hour and I am going 55 miles an hour, there's no way to know if you and I are going to crash or if we're racing head to head and we're staying even with each other or if we're going in opposite directions. And so the direction and your frame of reference will be very important. Right? And so the idea here is that momentum has a directional characteristic that is directly dependent upon the velocity, right? Obviously, mass cannot have direction, and so V is the, is the um, variable that is determining the momentum direction as well. Um, as a side uh, follow-up, momentum itself in terms of units is going to be kilograms for mass, times meters per second for velocity, which means that the units for momentum are simply those two things multiplied together, kilograms times meters divided by seconds. Unfortunately, in this particular um, field, there is no complex unit um, that combines all those things into one word, and so you'll just maintain kilograms meters per second for every calculation when you do momentum. Um, when it comes to just determining the momentum of an object, as long as you are in these SI units, the calculation is fairly simple. We just define the motion that we have from the problem and the mass in kilograms, and you multiply those two things together and you're good to go. Which means that the majority of what we'll be looking at has more to do with the change in momentum. The change in momentum, which is also a vector, is therefore delta p. And you can imagine that that would simply be p final minus p initial with their vector directions applied. But it's also important to recognize that this has its own term or its own vocabulary word. The change in momentum as a vector is defined as impulse. And so when an object undergoes an impulse, that object changes momentum. And so by definition, impulse is the, is the term. 
you will see sometimes that this is written as capital J, depending on the text. I tend to stick to just delta P because J also without the vector notation would be the units for energy, joules. Um, so I don't use the J, but you may, you may come across that in the future. What's important is that delta P obviously can be calculated by determining the momentum of the system after some event minus the momentum of the system prior to some event. Like for example, standing on a skateboard stationary, your initial momentum would be zero, your final momentum would be after someone has pushed you, right? And so your change in momentum comes from the final momentum that you have. But it's not unreasonable to think of other scenarios where you could decrease momentum by slowing down or stopping, or where you could increase momentum from a value where you're already moving, such as passing a car in the passing lane on the highway. In all cases, though, mo the change in momentum based on Newton's law, right? Uh, an object in motion remains in motion in a straight line unless acted on by a force. If we have a change in momentum, then there must be a net force that is driving that change. And how long I apply that force determines the overall net change in momentum. So this is impulse in its uh, equation format. We will be expanding this with our definition of momentum from above by simply adding in that m times delta v, since usually the mass is going to be constant, would therefore be equivalent to force times time. And so you have this as a defined equation for impulse. So depending on the problem, you'll be given presented with momentum characteristics and be asked to find the force or force characteristics for a period of time and asked to find the change in momentum. But it's not unreasonable to think that I could start with a force and a time frame and work towards the change in speed or use a change in speed in order to define the mass and so on and so on, right? Um, that being said, we haven't talked too much yet about force, so I want to just go through that briefly. Force, according to Newton's laws, is capital F as a vector. It has both magnitude and direction, and is often simply put as a push or pull right, applied to a system. We have a, an equation based on Newton's second law for force, that we will address a little bit more when we do dynamics. But Newton's second law says, states in words that the acceleration of an object is inversely proportional to its mass and directly proportional to its force. Written in math, that simply means that the net force, or sigma f, on an object is equal to m times a where a is a vector characteristic. So the acceleration is directly dependent upon the net force and inversely proportional to the mass. In SI units, much like with um, momentum above, SI units for mass are kilograms, and the SI unit for acceleration is meters per second squared. This does have its own defined term, and so this is redefined as a newton for obvious re reasons. It's important to note that if I multiply this times time, that cancels out the second squared, and I end up with kilograms meters per second, which is exactly what I would expect um, in the impulse case. 